Welcome back to the Don and Gino Real Estate and Finance Show right here in your hometown station, AM 1220 KHDS. And remember, our goal is always to guide you to personal and financial wealth. Well, hopefully you're sticking around for the second half of the Don and Gino Real Estate and Finance Show. Today, it's the Don and Rob Schwartz. <laughs> with Premier College Guide Show, Gino's off for bad behavior. Again, getting lumps in his stocking. Lumps of coal, anyways. Lumps from the wife, probably. Hey. <laughs> anyways, no, he's actually got plans uh, this week. So, Rob's joined me as my co-host, which he has many times, been on our show at least 15 times, for a reason. He's our Premier College counselor, um, guide, guru, you name it, because he's got it all. I've seen the fine work he does. I've seen the way he prepares I know his passion for what he does and the same passion I have for doing loans. I love helping people. I love helping you get into your home. I mean, the dreams of homeowners are nothing like it. I've never handed the keys to somebody and said, oh, that was a bad idea, ever. <laughs> Just like Rob, I'm sure anytime you get a child into the real school of their dreams, not what they thought, but what's best for them and the parents, you <laughs> agree going, yeah, we, can, we, we agree, <laughs> and it's best for the kid. There's nothing like it. You both feel good about it, but that means putting in some effort and getting some insight from somebody who can point you potentially in another direction or at least educate you on what other options are out there. We all should know our options. I know when I do loans, I don't just give my clients one ever. I'm like, just so you know what your options are. If you choose A, we're going to show you what B, C, and D is in case somebody goes, oh, did you think about B? And you're like, shoot, I didn't. That, that would have worked for me. Same thing as I'm seeing, I'll show what I know about some of these colleges for me. So let's dive in because we only had so much time. We we're already burning up time, but you got some great information, Rob. Well, I, I mentioned earlier we have, you know, the U.S. News and World Report rankings, which you now know I think are worthless. And we have payscale.com rankings, which they're not perfect, but I do think there's some merit to them and there's some data behind them and they will indicate some trends, which uh, I'm sure Don will help enlighten us on. Um, but I wanted to give you a couple of stark examples. Don, in the last segment, mentioned the University of Virginia. I've, I've been there. I've seen University of Virginia. It's a beautiful school. Hey, Thomas Jefferson can't go wrong, right? <laughs> right. Um, ranked 25th according to U.S. News and World Report. It is a top 25 school. That's a top, way in the top 1%. Yet, its ranking in pay scale is 121st. Not that they're not getting good education, just means right. what, what class, am I right, it's just the type of education they're getting and what the return on that is. I think there's a couple of things going on. One is, what percentage of your, your STEM, your science, technology, engineering, mathematics programs are being focused on that campus? Looks like less than the average. And two, they're in Charlottesville. You guys been to Charlottesville? It's three hours from anything. <laughs> so, how many jobs are there available in that community and what do they pay? Maybe starting jobs in the region aren't that strong. You have to go towards D.C. to make any real money. So, you may love living there and love the education. It doesn't mean you, you may not even care about the return on your investment. You may possible. just enjoy your, your education. Yeah, just don't tell that to your parents who are paying for it because mm. it's not cheap. <laughs> um, but this is why we're telling you, because it's probably the parents who are going to help make this decision. Uh, the, the most stark of all really, really did shock me. University of Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, top three school. A top three school and, and ranking 174th. Like, how is that even possible? I don't um, know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Um, UCLA, for those wondering, um, it's now moved into a tie for 21st in U.S. News and World Report in a tie with Berkeley and USC, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still tied with those knuckleheads. But, <laughs> and I say that begrudgingly because I, I am both a Bruin as an undergraduate and a faculty member for UCLA now. I teach college counseling. So anytime we're just tied with SC, it's kind of rough. He's Except football. Biased. I'd be very glad to be tied in football. I'm but a Bruin fan too. It's okay. We got a coach now. Yes. We had a really, really good coach. Now. Yes, he got a chip on our shoulder. We do. <laughs> um, so UCLA ranked tied for 21st. If you look at the pay scale return, tied for 85th. Mm -hmm. And I can speak to that very clearly. You have tons of students who are not in STEM majors. You have tons of students who are majoring in English and philosophy and history and political science, where you might not make that much money right off the bat. And that is reflective on return on investment for a large university. So keep that in mind. 
Well, then you look at some of this, Rob, and it's pretty apparent when you go into the STEM, again, science, technology, uh, mathematics, and engineering, you know, then, of course, MIT, no surprise. No Rank surprise. number five and rank number one in right. return on your investment. Absolutely. That's huge. Um, not only do you have, again, one of those top two engineering programs in the nation, but you're in Massachusetts, which is big money. Uh, you're in Boston, which is a major hub of business, industry, technology. It's all there. Um, that and the, the global reputation of MIT means you can go pretty much anywhere and you're going to secure a job. And as you pointed out, almost all the majors are STEM related, which is going to inflate starting values of jobs and high end value of jobs, which is why they're consistently number one or number two. Um, Number two in the list is Harvey Mudd College, which many of you have probably <laughs> never even heard of. It's in our backyard. It's in the Claremont Consortium of Colleges. It's the engineering arm of the Claremont system. And here's the thing. If you say, I'm interested in Caltech, you should be interested in Harvey Mudd. It's basically Caltech without the NASA connection or the brand. Same size, same, same quality of student, same nasty admission percentages, same return on investment. It's number two in the nation. Yeah, and you got Caltech, again, like you mentioned, intimate and tech-oriented, number five in the nation return on your investment. These right. are great schools. Um, you know, the other ones that stand up, Stanford does a great job. Yeah. Fifth uh, ranked uh, you know, nationally, and then you got sixth ranked, you know, in return on investment. So obviously some great schools, but it's really important to talk to someone who can help you with these return on investment. What's expected? Maybe it isn't the return on investment, maybe it's just a quality school or getting the experience. Rob can help you with that too. Well, let's dive into the schools that are a bit more mysterious. These are the ones that, yeah. that I consider sort of the, uh, the diamonds in the rough. So when I go back through that pay scale report and I take out all of those highly branded schools, I'm left with a list of about 25. And I'm just going to riff the names off. Every one of these schools ranks in the top 56 in return on investment in the United States. We've got the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, the Webb Institute, uh, State University of New York Maritime College, Cal State University Maritime Academy. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a Cal State school, guys. <laughs> Phenomenal educational opportunities if you're a good 68 fit. Sixty-eight percent return on your investment. Huge. No, 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 not a sixty-eight percent return on oh, investment. 68. That's the admission percentage. Oh, these are the it. admission percentages. Oh, so I like it. These are all schools that take a large number I of like students. Like that. Yeah. Um, my personal, one of my personal favorites on the list is Babson College. It's one of the premier business and entrepreneurial studies programs in the nation. Uh, they're fifteenth on the list. Uh, the Colorado School of Mines, uh, Worcester Polytechnic Institute, another one of these incredible Massachusetts institutes of learning. Uh, Kettering University, Rose Hulman Institute of Technology, considered by U.S. News to be the top undergraduate engineering program in these United States. And Don, what's the admission percentage? <laughs> it's one of the highest. 61% of you are getting in. And one of the best return on, the, on your investment you can get. So that's good information that you wouldn't normally get if you don't talk to a college counselor that actually looks on your behalf. Doesn't just talk to you about helping you get in, helping you with your SATs, or helping you with the money. It's so much more when you talk to a real counselor. Sorry, I just love that you look all around the options. Well, I mean, here's the thing. You, you can either get in line with the sheep or you can dig a little bit deeper and say, well, look, I might apply to some of those schools because I feel strongly about them and because I've researched them. But what about the rest of my list? Who else fulfills my needs that I stand a much better chance of getting in? I'm still going to get a world-class education, but I also might get some money from them because I'm a stronger student than their average. These are all good things. And so when families start laying out, we got in here and here and here and here, great. How much money is it going to cost to go here? You know, families might say, well, I got into MIT, but it's $65,000 a year and we got no financial aid. Well, I got into Rose Holman, it's going to cost me $20,000 a year. I got news for you guys. Go to Rose Holman, save the $45,000 a year and apply it to your master's or your PhD. Trust me. Too bad you gonna, don't just get like a percentage on what you save them, Rob. That would You'd be make a great, lot of great money. Great business investment, wouldn't it? <laughs> I saved you $100,000, I get 10%. Thank you very much. Yeah, we both go home happy. <laughs> and, it, you know, if you look at these themes, the STEM schools, again, science, technology, engineering, and math, 
are usually at the top of a lot of these schools. Six maritime naval engineering schools made the top 50 return on investment schools. And the other thing to think about, and we're going to go into more in depth of what schools offer a lot of this in the, next, the final segment. But remember also, are you planning to attend grad school, law school, med school? That has a lot of bearing on your, your decision. Also, how are you going to fund this? Where's this funding coming from? So it's imperative that you think about all the factors when planning college and beyond, and beyond, meaning what jobs you're going to get when you get it. When we come back, we're going to talk about some specific schools that you might not have thought of for specific learning and specific return on your investment. When we come back to the Don Gino Real Estate and Financial, don't go away. This last segment's going to rock.